and we welcome you back again to In Focus. Joining me now is VOA In Focus reporter Paul Diho. Hi, Paul. Hi, Ndimiake. So you're going to tell us about this first in a two-part series on failed states in Africa. That's right, Ndimiake. A study published by the Fund for Peace, a Washington-based nonprofit organization, says seven of the world's top ten failing states in 2011 are in Africa. The African continent continued to figure prominently again in 2011, with 27 African countries scheduled to hold or have already held presidential or legislative elections this year. Analysts say as much as elections can contribute to the democratic process, they are often a flashpoint for conflict. For example, the Ivory Coast was thrown into a four-month crisis with its outgoing president, Lolland Bagbo, refusing to step down. Uganda's longtime leader, Yoweri Museveni, won re-election in February, but the opposition cried foul, and his inauguration was marred by violent protests. In Nigeria, post-election violence killed as many as 800 people. Political analyst Ni Akwete says elections are necessary for democracy, but they are not sufficient. Democracy is very important, and one of the first major steps is, is, is elections. However, those who are for the, the democracy, even and those who are skeptical, nobody should think that the, uh, elections alone equal democracy. Last month, the Fund for Peace and the Foreign Policy magazine jointly released a failed states index for 2011. The study listed and rated some African countries on 12 indicators of pressure on the state during 2010. Uh, it's absolutely true, unfortunately, that uh, of the countries at the, the high end of the index, those countries that we believe are the most at risk of, uh, of state failure or even beyond that are just experiencing the most pressures in comparison to other states. Those do tend to be countries in Africa. Out of the 177 countries analyzed, most African countries performed poorly. For a fourth year in a row, Somalia held the number one spot. Somalia's transitional government has made some progress in stabilizing the security situation. But Al-Shabaab, the Al-Qaeda-linked militia group, continues to kill and attack civilians while trying to overthrow Somalia's transitional government. J.J. Messner, one of the authors of the Fund for Peace report, says it's important to look at the failed state's characterization as a representation of pressures on the state. Somalia at the top of the index is the closest that we come to what we might call a failed state, but that really is not our call at the Fund for Peace. We are not saying that Somalia is necessarily a failed state. What we are saying is that of all the countries in the world, Somalia is the most at risk of state failure. And Chad took the number two spot according to the report. In April 2011, Chad's president, Idris Adebe, widely regarded as a strongman, won re-election with almost 90% of the vote. Observers said the ballot was fraud and the turnout was low, but the president claimed victory. Sudan just went through a painful partition this month. In January, the country's south voted to secede from the north and the referendum went smoothly. North and South Sudan fought each other for decades in a civil war fueled by oil, ethnicity, religion and ideology. The violence claimed an estimated 2 million lives, forced 4 million to flee and destabilized the region. Ni Akwete attributes these failures to bad leadership and a lack of strong institutions on the continent. Leadership in Africa has been terrible. But you know, how do you correct leadership? In my view, actually, you correct leadership with strong institutions. I think it helps to have good leadership. The Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, is not doing well either on the failed states index. Congo is considered as one of the world's richest countries in terms of mineral resources, but remains poor. In the east where much of the mineral wealth lies, armed militias terrorize the impoverished population in a perpetual struggle to control land and mines. Thank you, Paul. An interesting story. Now, how do the Fund for Peace and the other organization determine these 12 indicators? 
Well, it was based uh, on a study that was carried out uh, over last year in 2010, and they looked at uh, economic pressures, democratic pressures, uh, pressures on the society, and even uh, uh, unemployment, uh, uh, the rule of law. And in, uh, they also looked at, uh, uh, at uh, how uh, the human rights situation in some countries, mm -hmm. the abuse of human rights in some countries. And you mentioned that some of these indicators change over time, and the country can move from being the worst to being better. Uh, absolutely. Uh, actually, according to this report uh, this year, they said a lot of countries improved. They did better than they did last year. For example, they look at Kenya. Uh, what affected Kenya last year was the post-election violence in 2008. But when you look at how well it performed this time around, yes, it's still doing poorly, but it managed to improve. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you're going to have a part two for us tomorrow. You're going to tell us about some of the countries that are doing a little better on this failed state index, including Zimbabwe and Ivory Coast. Yes, uh, okay. and uh, there are two other countries yes, that I, I have us. on the, on the right. list, mm -hmm. Uganda and... Uh, You'll tell us all about that. Thank you so much, Paul Ndiho, joining us on In Focus. And uh, as I mentioned, he'll be with us again tomorrow with part two of his failed states report.